Color grading can help take your stream to the next level visually. Whether you want to make your webcam look better, match your green screen camera to your backdrop, or just want to make your entire stream a little bit stylized. I want to stress the little bit here, less is more. And LUTs, or lookup tables, are a really powerful way to do that in OBS. They allow you to color grade in actual video editing software, then apply that in OBS. So today, I'm gonna show you how you can use Blender, completely free open source software, link in the description, to make your own LUTs to color grade your stream. It's pretty easy to do, and I think you'll have a lot of fun experimenting with it. And if you enjoy these tutorials, the absolute best way to show your support for the channel is to hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell. It's completely free, it really helps me out, and most importantly, it lets you know when there's cool new stuff to check out. That being said, let's get started. My name is Chris Folia, I'm your Stream Scholar, welcome to Stream School. So before we hop into Blender and actually color grade stuff, we need something to color grade. And for that, I would recommend just going to your full face cam scene hitting the start recording button for a bit, make a few funny faces, then hit stop recording. That will give you a video file that we can color grade in Blender that we can then apply to our LUT. So then over in Blender, before we do anything else, there are two settings that we need to change. First, go up to the camera tab, go down to color management, and change the view transform from filmic to standard. That will prevent your LUT from being washed out when we export it. Then you're going to want to go to the printer icon and change the resolution from 1920 by 1080 to 512 by 512. That's just the resolution of the LUT image that OBS uses to color grade your footage. So then you're going to want to go up to the top here where the tabs are and you're going to want to hit the compositing tab. That will put you in the node editor. And before we get started here, let's go ahead and split this into two by going down to the lower left hand corner, clicking and dragging. Then go to the button up here in the left and change that to the image editor. Finally, where this little image icon is right here, hit the drop down and change that to viewer node. And that'll give you a transparent square for the meantime, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Then over here in the node graph, you're going to want to come up here where it says use nodes and click that checkbox. So this will give you two nodes. We have render layers and a composite node. The composite node is your final output. The render layers is your 3D scene. So we don't need that. You can click render layers and hit delete to get rid of it. So to navigate the node graph, you can zoom in and out with your middle mouse wheel or you can click and hold your middle mouse wheel to pan around. Alternatively, you can also move individual nodes around by clicking and dragging on them, or by clicking it and then hitting G for grab and then clicking to set it down. So we need something that we wanna color grade in here. And that is the footage we just recorded. So to get that in, you can go to add, input, movie clip. It'll be attached to your mouse click to set it down, and then you can hit open right here. Uh, go to wherever yours is saved. Mine is saved way the heck over here. Uh, so this is where my OBS footage got recorded to. So now we have our movie clip. We can hold control shift on our keyboard and click that node, and that will give us a viewer node, which will also give us this backdrop here and it'll give us our, our image or our video in the image editor over here to the left. So this is gonna be really distracting having this really big in the backdrop. So what you can do is you can hit V to zoom out, just hit it a bunch of times or hit and hold it. Then you can hold Alt and you can move it around with the middle mouse button. So I'm gonna move mine all the way up here in the corner out of the way. So. To zoom back in, if you want it a little bit bigger, you can also hit Alt-V. So V and Alt-V zoom in and out. It's just uh, important to know, I guess. And then Alt plus middle mouse button drags it around. So you'll notice we have this viewer node. We're gonna wanna give us some space to work here. And the viewer node is not our final image output. If we hit render right now by going to render, render image, we get a solid black square because nothing is connected to the composite node. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. So we want to color grade our webcam. And to do that, 
we have a bunch of different options for nodes to use. And node-based compositing, if you're unfamiliar with it, uh, works like this. So we have our movie clip, and we have the image output going through this line into the viewer node. So if we wanna color correct this, we need to add a color correction node in between the two. So if we go to add, color, color balance, that is now attached to our mouse. We can move it over the line. Notice the line highlights. Then you just click it to set it into place. So now our movie clip is going into the color correction node. It does all of our calculations, then it goes out to the viewer. And just for the record, you can add as many of these color correction nodes along this path as you want. You can add it before this one or after this one. Uh, just to prove that, we can add a color RGB curves and click. And now we have it going into the color balance, into the RGB curves, into the viewer. So any calculations we do on either of these nodes will affect our final output image. So. For instance, let's say we want to color grade this and then bring that into OBS. So maybe I want the highlights to be a little bit brighter. On the color balance node specifically, we have our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights. And by the way, I just prefer the color balance node. There are a whole bunch of options here for you. So if you go to color, we have the RGB curves, which are already dragged out. Another cool one is the hue saturation value, which allows you to mess with the saturation and the hue of your image. Um, another cool one is the hue correct. So don't be afraid to experiment and just play with different nodes. Uh, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm using the color balance node. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. So shadows, midtones, and highlights. Let's say you wanna make the highlights a little bit brighter. I can click this little dot and drag it up. And you'll notice that as I drag this around, that makes my image a little bit brighter. Then we can make our shadows a little bit darker to add some contrast. So I can click the shadows and drag those down. If at any time I want to see the original image, I can just select this node, hit M as in mom or mute to mute it. And that'll show us our original node before the color grades. So then let's say we wanna get stylized here like an Instagram filter. We can just change the warmness by maybe making the highlights a little bit more orangey. It, we'll make it super stylized just for the sake of this tutorial, but I would recommend going subtle with your color grading. You don't wanna to get too wacky or crazy. We can make our shadows a little bit blue tinted. So now looking at the original versus the edited, we have a cool Instagram filter looking thing. Then you'll also notice that we have the curves here that I plugged down and you can modify that as well if you want to. I don't personally want to, but just know that you can add as many color corrections along this line as you want to. So then to export this to a LUT that we can use in OBS, we need the original OBS LUT image. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the RGB curves and plug this back into the viewer but you can find the original LUT image under Windows Explorer. You can go to your program files, go to OBS Studio, go to Data, go to OBS Plugins, go to OBS Filters, go to LUTs. I know it's super buried down there. I wish it was in a more obvious location. But under this folder, you'll notice we have a bunch of different example LUTs that they've made for you that can be fun to play around with. But if you wanna make your own, they've also included the original LUT image. So you can color grade this and apply it in OBS. So we can click this and drag it into Blender. That's another way that you can import movies or images into Blender in the compositing editor. Then all we have to do to export this is click the yellow image dot, plug that in where our movie clip is plugged in, and now all of a sudden we have our color graded LUT. And just to prove that it's different, I can control shift click this, then control shift click this. And you can see there's a difference between the two. It's getting color graded. So then we take our image and we can plug it into the compositing node. Finally, we go to render, render image. And that will give us our color grading LUT. So let me just go to image, save as, and I'm gonna save this as X grade for example grade, 
hit enter twice to save it as a PNG. Then we can hop back into OBS. We can go to an example green, uh, an example scene here. I can right click my camera, go to filters, go to the little plus button, hit apply LUT, and we'll call this yeehaw. Hit okay. Browse to where your LUT image is. Mine is all the way over here. And we had X grade, so I can double click that. And now if we turn this off and on, you'll notice that my webcam is now matching the color grades that we did in Blender. And let's say you wanna color grade the gameplay or the entire scene. Those are also options. So if you wanna do the gameplay, it's exactly the same as doing it to your camera. You can just right click the gameplay and go to filters and do it there. Or if you wanna color grade the entire scene, you can right click your scene Go to filters, hit the plus button, apply LUT, and then find your LUT again. I don't want to dig for that, so I'll just use one of theirs. But here we've color graded the entire scene. But let's say we want to get a little bit fancier. Let's say we have our green screen camera over like an animated backdrop of some sort. And we want to color grade our camera to match the backdrop. Well, that's not too difficult either. So let's hop back into Blender and show you how to do that as well. Because obviously this camera doesn't fit into the backdrop very well. So back in Blender, I'm going to hit B for box select. Select everything except for the LUT, the viewer, and the composite. And I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to move this out of the way for now. But then I'm going to go back to my examples. Here I've recorded just a green screen footage example or an image in this case and if I drag that into the viewer or hit control shift on it you'll notice that we now have our green screen but if we color grade just our green screen camera we have no idea if this is matching our background or not so to bring our background in I'm going to go ahead and drag that in we can mix, we can, we can do some green screening in Blender and color grade just us to make sure we're matching the background. So if I go to add, matte, keying, there are a whole bunch of different options. I found keying to be the most useful and plug our image into that. You'll notice our shirt is disappearing and that's because we haven't chosen the green screen color yet. Oh, that's really creepy. But then we can go to the keying color we can select the eyedropper and we can select our green screen. And that will give us some uh, interesting results. If we hold control shift and click the keying node again, you'll notice that our mat is not super clean. We have solid white, which means we're visible, but then some of the green screen backdrop is visible as well. So white is visible, black is invisible, everything else is in between. So if we Go to our keying node, we can clip the black by clicking and dragging here. And this doesn't have to be 100% perfect. We're literally just using this as an example for color grading for OBS. Then we can clip our white back some too to make sure our main mat is solid. And that gives us a much cleaner mat. So then we can control shift click this two more times and that gives us our image. So to mix this with our backdrop, we can go to add color alpha over and put this in between our keying and our viewer and this is going to plug into the image by default or the background by default the important thing to know about the alpha over node is that the top is the background and the bottom is the foreground so bottom is top top is bottom i know it's confusing but we're going to want to take the image and plug that into the bottom one so now we have our guy over a white backdrop. Then we can take our background image and plug that into the other image input. And this looks super incorrect. So what we can do to fix this is take the mat out of our keying node and plug that into the factor. So now we have our example. We have our example set up in Blender. And the entire purpose of this example is so we can color grade this footage right here. So let's add another color balance node, add color, color balance. And we can plug our image into the color balance, then plug our color balance into the image. So now, 
if we color grade this, let's say we want this to be a little bit less washed out, which means darker shadows, it's only gonna affect us and not the background. Then we can make our highlights a little bit brighter. And then we want the color to match a bit better too, which means more blue, purple, a little bit cooler. So I might drag this a little bit over into the purple territory. Maybe that's a little bit much. <laughs> Maybe same with the midtones, make those a little bit bluer. Shadows, I think I'll leave alone. But then if we hit M on this node, we can see what it looked like before and after. So now this matches our background significantly better, which is really cool. And another useful tool, and the whole reason I gave you the image, or one of the reasons I gave you the image editor here, uh, is if you click this arrow right here, go to scopes, you also have access to all of your color grading scopes. You have the histogram, the waveforms, and the vector scope. And if you're familiar with color grading at all in various other applications, uh, these can provide a lot of useful data to you. I'm not gonna go super in depth as to how these work or what they're showing. Uh, just know they're there if you are familiar with them, which can help you make better color grades. But once we have our color grades somewhere where we're happy, like so, we can go ahead and plug our LUT into the color balance, like so. And then this is gonna give us some weird results. So then we're gonna take our color balance and plug that into the composite. We do not want to, we do not wanna plug the alpha over into the composite. I know this looks like a bunch of really sharp spaghetti noodles, but uh, just know LUT, into color balance into output. That's all you have to do after you've made your corrections. Then go to render, render image. That will give you your color graded LUT. I'm going to save this as fortune LUT. Yeah. Hop back into OBS. We can right click our camera, go to filters. We can add a LUT. Make sure you're adding this after your chroma key. Go to Browse, find the location of your LUT. I wish it would just save for the folder that I'm in. We're gonna grab Fortune LUT, yeah, and that no notice will make us more purple to fit in with the background a bit better. And this isn't perfect. You're gonna wanna spend some time on your color grades to make them really solid, but that's pretty cool. Uh, however, there is one problem with this. If you have multiple scenes or green screen backdrops, uh, you'll notice that if we color grade our camera in this scene, it has also color graded our camera in this scene, which is problematic. We probably don't wanna look super purple when we're playing a video game. We only wanna look super purple in our green screen scene. And there's a really easy workaround for this. So if we delete, or first of all, let's turn off the LUT. So go to filters, delete the LUT, delete, delete the green screen camera. Uh, we can go to our scenes, hit plus, label this one, whatever you want to, but I'm gonna call mine fortune teller cam, yeah. Uh, then add our camera or our webcam, our green screen camera. For this example, I have an image since I'm using my camera to record this tutorial. Uh, green screen example, hit okay. Then we can go to the scene, right click it, go to filters, uh, hit plus, go to apply LUT, go to browse. I'm gonna find it. It's gonna take some time and deal with it. <laughs> Hit close. So now our camera is being color graded, but if we go to our main gameplay scene, it's not being affected. So if we now go to our green screen scene, hit plus, we can add a scene instead of a camera or media source. We can find our fortune teller cam, yeah, hit okay. We have our color graded self on our green screen backdrop and we have our uncolor graded camera on our gameplay scene. So at the end of the day, that is how you create a LUT using Blender that you can use in OBS. And obviously you can do the same kinds of things with Photoshop, Premiere, After Effects, Resolve, whatever software you're comfortable with, you can modify this LUT image and plug it into OBS to color grade your footage. I just wanted to show you all Blender because the node-based compositor is very powerful. 
But anyway, that is how you make a LUT using Blender that you can use in OBS. Hopefully at this point, you know how to make LUTs to make your stream more beautiful. And please, please don't overdo it. Less is more most of the time. If you have any questions or just want to come hang out with an incredible community, I'm live at least every Friday at twitch.tv slash oraclefishlive. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below the video and ring the bell for new content every single week. Until next time, my name is Chris Folia. I'm your stream scholar, and class is out.